Join me right now on Kumite TV is multiple time Muay Thai and kickboxing world champion Liam Harrison. What's going on, Liam? Uh, thank you for having me. I'm just training currently for my next fight in uh, Shanghai, 15th of June on one championship. Um, fighting a big name Thai, Rod Lake from PK Sanchai Gym. It's my second time on one, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, and so am I, man. Um, currently, you're sitting in Bangkok. How long have you been there, and uh, how much of your camp have you had so far over there in Bangkok? Um, I've been here for about 11 or 12 days now. Um, I've just come here just to finish it off. There's no point flying all the way from England to Shanghai, 15-hour fly, jet-lagged and getting there tired. So I thought I'd come out here a bit earlier, get my work in here, then it's only a four-hour flight to Shanghai then, so I'll still be fresh. But I've, I've done this for my last three or four fights now, come out to Bangkok. i uh, been training at the Yokohama gym with all the, the top tire trainers there. So, yeah, uh, camp's gone, gone really good. Is there any uh, particular trainer that you've been working with while you've been in Bangkok? Um, yeah, I've been working with Petch Mankon um, from the Yokohama gym. He's, um, he used to be a stadium champion at Lumpini. Plus, multiple time champion elsewhere. He was a real good fighter back in the day, but he's still young. He's still only like around 31 years old, 32 years old. So, he's really been putting me from a pace. He's a great trainer as well, and he's big and strong. He's good for clinching, good for sparring. He's um, basically everything I need all rolled into one, although I am getting working with the other guys. Um, a lot of my work, work and time has been spent with him, and he's doing a, a real good job and really going out of his way and beyond the call of duty to try and make sure I'm in the best shape possible. You said you've been there for almost two weeks, but before that, you were back in England. Who were you working with over there to prepare yourself for Radlick? Yeah, I, uh, my main padman over there is uh, Andy House and my cousin. Uh, and I work with Richard Smith, obviously, as well. He's the, the boss of Bad Company Gym, where I train. Um, but then again, I've got Joe Craven and Jordan Watson for sparring. We've got top, a lot of top fighters at the gym in England. Um, We've been like, renowned as one of Europe's best gyms for many years now. So whether I'm in Bangkok or whether I'm in the UK, I always get the best sparring possible. So, um, yeah, I've, I'm just back from a knee injury as well, which worried me slightly. But my knee seems stronger than ever. Um, the surgery went great. My old training's gone great. So I'm really, really looking forward to this fight. I saw a couple of videos of you sparring with Sanchai. You know, he's the legend. He's the... I, you know, in my opinion, he's probably the greatest, you know, Muay Thai specialist out there right now living. Um, well, how is it, man, getting in work with him? I know you fought him a few times, but still, you know, you get in there and get some practice and learn from him. It's great going back to Yokao Gym because, like you say, we fought three times and they were three absolute wars as well. I mean, like, we absolutely went to town on each other when we fought and there were three close fights. He actually said out one of his hardest fights, which was... A massive accomplishment for me um, but now I get to actually train with him and learn with him and every time he comes in the gym and sees me he's like oh Liam come on sparring and I'm like oh no not again but I learned so much even if it's just for like a five minute play spar with him you pick so much little tricks up and um, I'm sure you saw the video on my Instagram the other day if anyone was following me on Instagram it's Liam Badko by the way if there's a video of him and he would just get sweeping me on the floor but after he did that to me what the cameras didn't show he was then showing me what he was doing, how he did it, and then I could obviously learn how we were doing it and how he read what I was going to do, which is it's unbelievable for someone who I fought three times, the greatest fighter of the last 25 years, for me to be training alongside him and picking up tips off him. It's uh, every day's a school day in Muay Thai and I'm learning off the master. Now, going into your fight, it's a Muay Thai fight. It's in MMA gloves. You know, your last fight in one championship was in 10-ounce gloves. What's the difference, you know, when you go into a fight in your preparations? Um, well, my last fight on one championship, I, I took it on a week's notice. It was at 70 kilograms. I only fight at 65 kilograms against Pech Morocco. He was a big giant compared to me. Um, like I said, I only took it on a week's notice as well. It was a nothing-to-lose situation, that. But this one, I prepared properly. And... Um, I've been working in the MMA gloves and stuff, and it's okay throwing your own shots in them. You just need to work, tweak certain little things to make sure your defense is on point as well. Because when you've got two elite world-class strikers in there in those gloves, it's only going to take one mistake, and your lights are going to get turned out. Do you know what I mean? So you've got to really tweak just a few things. It's not massive differences, but just tweaking a little through a few things. Obviously, there's a 
few more gaps for the shots to get through through your hands and stuff. So I've had to tweak a little bit here and there. But um, I'm looking forward to it. It's a it's a different challenge, and um, obviously I've had a lot of fights and I've won a lot of titles and stuff. So now I'm my sole concentration is just making myself a big name with one championship and hopefully getting a shot at the the 65 kilo title. Your opponent Rodlick, you know, there's probably a lot of mutual respect there. What do you think of his skill set? You know, what do you think he brings for you as a challenger? He's a very strong fighter. You know, he's elite, elite level in the Bangkok stadiums. Um, he's fought all the top names, beat a lot of them. Um, it's going to be a tough fight. I've no, no doubt in my mind it'll be a, a, a tough test. Um, but also, no doubt in my mind that I'm going to win it. I've, uh, I mean, I mean, probably the best shape of my career at the minute. I'm feeling really good in training. And um, I think just the the rule set and everything, and I'll ju- it'll just suit my style down to the ground. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really confident. It seems like you want to continue with one championship. What is your plan with the the promotion? Are you gonna go after Nongo and his band and weight title? One hundred percent. That is <laughs> what I want to do. I wanna I wanna win this fight in style. I fight again six weeks after on Yokao in Dublin. I wanna win that in style. And then when I do, then I, uh, I want to, whoever's got the title, when I come back to sign for my next fight one championship, I would love for a shot at them. Um, obviously, that it's the biggest fighting organisation in the world at the minute. And I've won a lot of world titles, but that one's obviously missing. So to add that to my collection, and then uh, that would be, would be unbelievable. As a fighter that can, you know, go fight for one promotion and then step out from the promotion and fight for another promotion. How does that make you feel? You know, do you feel more valuable when, you know, they allow you to do that? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I've, I'm obviously sponsored by Yokao as well. So I don't think it'd be very fair to me or to them. If I were just signed to one of a total organization, I couldn't fight for them. The Yokao has I've shows around Europe as well. Um, the one I'm fighting on on 27th of July is in Dublin, Ireland. I don't want all my fights just to be in Asia. I want to, to come between them both. I want the Asian fans to be able to see me fight. I want the European fans to be able to see me fight. So then I get I get the best of both worlds. My fans and supporters around the world get the both worlds. So I can come back and forth and everyone still gets to, to see it and everyone can be happy then. Yeah, it's a, it's a great situation for you, man. Um, now, let's talk about the one Super Series Featherweight Kickboxing Grand Prix. The first round was pretty insane. Uh, what did you think of Yotes and Clyde getting upset by Sammy Saya? Sammy Sana is an absolute giant. I don't even know how he made that weight, to be fair. <laughs> He's huge. Um, but, yeah, it was an upset. But I don't think it was as big as an upset as some people carried on because Sammy is a dangerous fighter, you know. He's... He's big, he's strong, he's really tough. He, he's good at kickboxing, he's good at Muay Thai. He's had a lot of fights, had around 150 fights. So I don't think that was... It was a shock, but I don't think it was that big a shock because he is a very talented, strong fighter. And he's probably maybe the favourite to, to win the tournament now after that performance because dropping Yard and beating him the way he did, it was a, a massive statement. Yeah, I think it was a shock because a lot of people that watch just one championship they didn't they don't know about sammy and he came in there and and yosin Klai has been wrecking people in the in the in the promotion so that's why i feel like it was an upset for the promotion yeah. right in that if you in, yeah, in terms yeah, of definitely. that it was but it, worldwide if, if you it was to, no surprise yeah if you say to like the average joe's just a muay thai fan and they say yosin Klai, sammy sana they're all gonna know yosin Klai. maybe not many they'll know sammy but you now People who were in the know probably knew how dangerous a fight that was going to be for Yod. Um, but now everyone knows him after that. So he's done big, big things for himself there with that performance. Yeah, definitely. Um, now your former opponent, Pemorakot, he defeated Giorgio Petrosian via split decision in the first round of the tourney. Did you watch that fight? And who do you believe won? I, personally, I thought Pech Morakot did nothing wrong. Um he used the three-second clinch rule. He did it to his best ability. He smothered a lot of Giorgio's work. Um, obviously, I'm not a judge of kickboxing style, but that was, that, that was only Pitch Morocco's second kickboxing fight as well. Um, and I'm, It's split down the middle. I know 50% of people will say, no, Giorgio won, and the other 50% say, no, 
Pedro Morricot won. So, yeah, I, I thought watching it, Pedro Morricot's knees were scoring effectively, smothered a lot of Giorgio's work. But like I say again, I, kickboxing's not my sport. I'm Muay Thai. I'm not too sure how, how it's scored or how it should be scored. Um, so, yeah, a lot of controversy, but it's drawn a lot of people to it. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens here because I've heard a few rumours that Pedro Morricot isn't going to fight, but I've spoke to a few other people who said he is going to fight. So him and Georgia still might have to fight, so I don't know what's going on at the minute. Definitely, yeah. There's a lot of uh, rumors swirling, and it does bring a lot of eyes to the to the promotion and to the tournament, which is good at the end of the yeah. day, man. Like, if they rematch, that's great. If they don't rematch, still, people will be interested in who they put in there. Would you be interested, yeah. after you go take care of business in Shanghai, you know, I know kickbox is not your thing, but would you, it's a million dollars on the line. I'm too small. I proved that when I stepped in late notice against Pech Morocco. I mean, that fight's at 70 kilos. I mean, I jumped on the scales this morning after training. I was 68 kilos, do you know what I mean? And that's that's this morning after drinking loads of water in the gym and stuff as well. I jumped on the scales and I'm only 68. When I fought Pech Morocco, I took it on a week's notice and I was walking around at 70 then and the fight was at 70. And I've not really been training too much in the two weeks building up to that fight. I'd have time off and been eating a lot of rubbish and just enjoying myself because Christmas was coming up. So even when I'm at my heaviest, I'm nowhere near big enough for it. If I got to fight Sammy Sanna, he could just knee me in the face by lifting his leg about that high. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm too small for that weight. But if they do a tournament at 65 kilos, sign me up. I'm the first <laughs> one in, sign me up 100%. Well, I get, I'm thinking that they're going to be doing tournaments you know, every year moving forward. And the bantam weight or the weight class that you're fighting at, man, I believe that that would yeah, be one to do it at. Yeah, hundred percent. There's a lot of exciting fighters in um in the bantam weight mm -hmm. division, one hundred percent. So if they do do a tournament, whether it's Muay Thai or kickboxing, for that kind of money, you can't say no. I would one hundred percent. I'd love to be in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm excited to see you back into in the uh, one championship cage, June fifteenth in Shanghai. One le legendary quest. Thank you so much, Liam, for your time. And, uh, you know, you got anything else to say? Yeah, I'd just like to say, one, thank you for having me. Um, two, I look forward to seeing everyone in Shanghai and I've put on a, an excellent show for you. I'm feeling good for it. Three, thank you to all my sponsors. Jim King, Love Hemp. Uh, thank you, guys. Apollo Nutrition, thank you to you all. And um, thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for your time.